In this video, we look at the sine and cosine rule and area of a triangle, which are key concepts in the AI course found in topic three, geometry and trigonometry under the subtopic of trigonometry. Now we're moving on to non-right angle triangles now. So up until this time, you've been looking at right angle triangles. So triangles that look something like this, that has a right angle, and has an hypotenuse and two shorter side lengths. And you've been using techniques such as Pythagoras theorem or the three trig ratios, sine, cos, and tan, to find unknown side lengths and unknown angles. And you have been using the basic formula for the area of a triangle, half base times height, to find the areas. But we're now moving on to non-right angle triangles, so triangles that do not have a right angle. And in order to find unknown side lengths, angles and areas of these non-right angle triangles, we need to use these new formulas here, the sine rule, the cosine rule, and you can see here there are two versions of the cosine rule. It's actually the same rule, but the second version is just a rearrangement of the first one, and then the area of a triangle rule here. But before we go into examples of these rules, let's firstly recap how do we correctly label a triangle in order to use these rules correctly. Now, the, the important points to remember are that angles are given capital letters. So for example, this bottom left angle here, we can call it capital letter A. And the opposite side length to that angle, we will give the lowercase letter, the same, the same letter, but just the lowercase. So for example, here would be lowercase A. Likewise here, this top angle, we'll call this capital letter B, and you can give it any uh, letter you want, you could call it uh, D, you could call it N, but the important point is the opposite side length needs to be the lowercase version of that letter, so this would be lowercase b. For triangles, we tend to just use the three letters A, B, C. So this last one here will be capital C, and the opposite side length will be lowercase c, and we usually put a little squiggle under the C to show that it's lowercase. Okay, let's go through some examples now. I won't go through all the way to solving, otherwise this video will go too long, but I'll just try to talk through when do we use the different types of rules here in different situations. And let's firstly talk about the sine rule. We tend to use the sine rule when we have a pair of an angle and its opposite side given to us in the question. So for example, if we were given a triangle that had an angle, let's say this was 30 degrees, and let's say we had the opposite side length, let's say this was say 20 centimeters, and we would try to find an unknown, let's say side length, whenever you see a pair that you're given of an angle and an opposite side, that's usually a pretty good hint that you're going to have to use the sine rule in this situation. Now in this particular example here, you'll also probably be given another angle. So let's say this here is 100 degrees and you'll be asked to find this side length here, let's call it X. Now in this example here, we can set up the sine rule to go ahead and solve for X. So we would, looking at the sine rule here, it's a side length divided by the sine of its opposite angle. So in this case here, the side length X divided by the sine of its opposite angle, which would be 100, will be equal to another combination, and I like to use the word pair, of side length divided by sine of its opposite angle. Now we can use the pair here given to us in the question. So this will be the side length 20 divided by sine of its opposite angle, 30. And we now have one equation with one unknown x, we can go ahead and solve for x, but I won't do that in this video. Feel free to go ahead and try to practice to solve for x here. Okay, let's just go through another example of the sine rule, but this time trying to find an unknown angle. Let's say that we have this angle here given to us and this side length here. Again, I have, I have a pair of angle and opposite sides. That's a, usually a good hint that we're going to use the sine rule here. And let's say I have this side length here and I want to find this unknown angle here and we usually give that theta. Well, again, I'm thinking, okay, I have a pair of side length and opposite angle. I can use the sine rule here. And again, we can set up this sine rule to, to solve for theta. So this would be a side length, uh, sorry, we'll use 60. So 60 divided by sine of its opposite angle, sine theta is equal to the pair that we have. So 40 centimeters divided by sine of 60. 
There we have it, we have one equation with one unknown. Theta, we can go ahead and solve for theta. This one's a little bit trickier because the unknown is both an angle and on the bottom of the fraction, but there are plenty of questions in the question bank that go through this type of solving, or you could potentially use numerical solve on your calculator so that your calculator can solve for theta. Okay, that covers the two different types of sine rule questions. Let's now go through the cosine rule. Now there are two different versions of the cosine rule given, so let's focus on this first version here. This first version we use when we want to find an unknown side length, and we have the other two side lengths as well as the opposite angle. So that means, let's say I have this angle in here, 30 degrees, I want to find the opposite side length x, and I have the two other side lengths. So for example, let's call this 40 centimeters, and let's just call this 50 centimeters for argument's sake. So in this situation here, notice that I don't have a pair of angle and opposite side length. That's usually a good sign that you need to use the cosine rule. But I do have this combination that I have an angle and the two other side lengths. So we would go ahead and use this first version of the cosine rule. So that would be, in this case, x squared, is equal to, so looking at the, the, the formula here or the rule here, the squares of the other two side lengths subtract two times the other two side length multiplied by cos of the opposite angle. Bit of a mouthful there, but uh, practice it a few times and you'll get the hang of it. So this would be the other two side length squared, 40 squared plus 50 squared, subtract two times 40, times 50, and then cos of the opposite angle to the side that we're trying to find. So the, try, the side that we're trying to find is x, so the opposite angle is 30, so cos 30. Now we have one equation with one unknown x. We can uh, either use algebra or numerical solve to solve for x. Okay, let's look at the second cosine rule now. We use this one here when we have all three side lengths and we are trying to find a missing angle C. So that would be that we're trying to find, say this angle here. Now I'm not sure if my triangle is exactly gonna work here, so, uh, so forgive me if it doesn't exactly work. But let's say if I did have, this is 30 centimeters, this is 50 centimeters, and this is say 45 centimeters. When you have all three side lengths and you're trying to find an unknown angle, that should be alarm bells. Okay, I can use the second version of the cosine rule here. So it will be cos of the angle that we're trying to find is equal to, now just be careful here, you can't just randomly choose any side lengths. Notice here that the side length opposite to the angle that we're trying to find, so capital C, lowercase c, is the subtraction on the top of the fraction. So just, just remember that. You can't just sort of randomly choose any side lengths here. So in our case here, our 30 centimeters is actually going to be this negative 30 squared. So this will be, uh, and I can you can choose any uh, for a and b. So this will be say 50 squared plus 45 squared, subtract 30 squared, and then the two side lengths on the bottom of the fraction do not include the opposite side length. So two times 50 times 40. Now we have one equation with one unknown theta. We can go ahead and solve for theta. Okay, so that covers the two different types of cosine rules. So we've now gone through the sine rule and the two types of the cosine rule to find unknown angles and side lengths. Let's now look at the error of a triangle formula here. So this is a area of a triangle formula when we do not have a right angle triangle. And we can use it when we have an angle. So for example, 30 degrees. And we have the two, and the correct word here is the two adjacent side lengths to this angle. Adjacent meaning next to. So for example, if this here was 40, degree, uh, 40 centimeters, and this was say 45 centimeters, notice that these two side lengths are next to the angle. These two side lengths are adjacent to the angle. When we have this combination here of angle and two adjacent side lengths, we can use the area of a triangle formula to find the area of this triangle. So this will be the area is equal to one half multiplied by the two side lengths, so 40 multiplied by 45, and then multiplied by sine of the angle 30 degrees. 
And there's no real solving to do here. You can just enter that into your calculator and you'll get the area of this triangle. Now, just be careful. If you don't have the two adjacent side lengths, you unfortunately can't use this formula. Okay, that was a quick overview of using the sine and cosine rule and area of a triangle to find missing side lengths, angles and areas of non-right angle triangles. I recommend now practicing some of these IB exam questions over in the question bank.